Science. Science. Yeah, you yes, know, science. this is usually thought of as a, you know, sacred, spiritual, religious mm. path, but science has been very useful for your pr uh, practice. It's yeah. also been useful for mine. Yeah. I thought it'd be use useful talking about the sort of uses and abuses of science for the awakened life, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, when I was <clears throat> started way back when pterodactyls flew in the air, yeah, yeah, way back. When, See those pictures. We, we had <laughs> we had no science of the brain. There just wasn't anything. We had some some really clumsy EEG stuff, but nobody would pay attention to it, and there was nothing to go on. So you just kind of flew over in the dark as an empirical scientist. I thought we should have a science about this thing. It didn't matter. We didn't have one, so we just wanted to go on and on and just kept trying things and stuff worked out. Flying blind. Flying blind. Yeah. But now in the last 10 years, I mean the last 8 years, explosion. We really do now have a lot of science that gives great insights into what has been happening, what happened with psychedelics, mm -hmm. how it looks like meditation, how meditation develops, how much time it takes to change things, what centers are being affected. We still have a long ways to go. There will be much more in the future to come out of this. There's some very good people, lots of money coming into it now, top peer journals. But the science has really been fantastic. Well, to me, one of the most important aspects is because I've, you know, I, I've always been fascinated by science and skeptical of science because yeah. that's what it really means to be into science, is to be skeptical mm -hmm. uh, of any particular scientific claim. Is that, you know, when I really got down and looked at, uh, you know, some of the studies that you pointed me to, what I found compelling about them is that they pointed to the fact that there is such a thing as such a state. Mm -hmm. Right, that, that the non-dual state correlates with different kinds of uh, empirical data. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the empirical data tells us what the non-dual state is, mm -hmm. only that the long you know, uh, history of reports that there is a state where you experience your non-separation mm -hmm. from all things and the silencing of the mind and the, and the uh, emptying of images in the mind and that that state is to be sought after, and to, uh, by whom, of course, is a good question. And the fact that we have correlative data that says, yeah, maybe, you know, like even if that's all it says is, yeah, maybe, mm -hmm. that it's not pie in the sky, it's not a UFO, mm -hmm. right? You know, that, that the non-dual state that we're describing here actually, you know, can be modeled mm -hmm. scientifically. To me, that's huge. Well, even specificity, we know about the <clears throat> default mode network, which is really key to understanding this. We know the two sub-networks, and one of those networks is yourself in time, you in time, the other one is you and others. And the traditional mystical experiences are no sense of time, personal time, right. you can still tell the clock, but no right. sense of personal time, and no sense of something being other than all one thing. Right. And that's, you can actually look in that network and see how those things are coded in, and what centers need to be shut down to make that situation happen. Whether it's psychedelics or meditation, we know what centers code in for that. Right, so the, the one uh, network points to the fact that, that this is an experiential reality, just as real as my experience that your shirt is black, mm -hmm. that it's all one thing. Mm -hmm. And what I think is very intriguing is you've pointed in the past to the idea that one of the real quick heuristic uh, devices you can use to identify uh, how far along somebody is on awakening is, do they think they're in control? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that if you think on that one domain, the, the I in time, mm -hmm. it says, well, of course I'm in control. I'm moving through time as an I. <clears throat> but it's not so much when you're in the other domain, it's not so much that you're not in control as, for, as the question doesn't even make any sense. Right. Because how, I, what would I be in control of? I am all of this right. stuff manifesting together. Right. And so it doesn't, I, I just think this might be helpful because it doesn't feel like a loss. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like, oh, once upon a time there was control where that network of my eye was traveling through time and now I no longer have control. Right. Um, but it's more that the whole question of control appears as a kind of non sequitur, mm -hmm. you know, because that state that had formerly been sort of dominating my own experience, which is the eye traveling through time mm -hmm. and not having enough of it, um, fades in favor of the kind of sense of self being intertwingled inter or entangled mm -hmm. with absolutely everything. So that is very beautiful confirming data. Again, you know, again, for me what it functions as is, hey, 
I'm not nuts <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> about that. About that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that, that, that maybe, okay, yeah, I mean, not only can I find in the mystical tradition things that correspond to experiences that I've had that I look around and say, how, how can this be so? Mm -hmm. What's happening? Mm -hmm. But also, uh, you know, for people who have not had the experience saying, hey, you know, I mean, actually, you know, you might have doubts about Sasquatch. You might have doubts <laughs> about aliens. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do, right? But this is, you know, as much of an entity in the world, it'll appear, as oxygen. Right. Right? right? Yeah. That, to me, is huge. Yeah. Yeah, and the whole thing about even, this is anthropological now, I mean, knowing that roughly 75,000 years ago, we didn't have, we created an eye. You know, we did mm -hmm. not have one in both rock and chimpanzees six million years what ago. What are you working on back there? <laughs> He's been in the garage all day. Exactly. But then, <laughs> this is my creation. Not until 75,000 years ago did we actually, looks like, create this whole construct of, yeah. of a symbolic logic consciousness with an eye in it. And so this is a relatively recent invention that we've, that we've done to ourselves. And having the evolutionary data, working that out, that's an important understanding. This is not something that we had at the, you know, a million years ago or six million years ago. It's very recent. Right. That's useful. Right, from an evolutionary perspective, 75,000 years is nothing. like zero. Out of six million years? We yeah. Work out, nothing. Yeah. It's nothing. Also, you, know, you mentioned not being in control. I mean, I fell into not having any free will because I, there was no I there, and it was like, duh. <laughs> There's nobody there. This isn't even a question anymore, to your point. There's no yeah. question anymore. But it was also very helpful to see when the science started to roll out, yeah. trying to find yeah, where, where the I is, we can't find it. It's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So, you know, we can what hundred places. It's just an ad hoc entity. And also, we have these ones, these famous libid experiments, where we look and see, okay, we're, when do we know we're going to do something? When do we do something? And when does the brain, you know, do it? And the brain always starts. The brain starts the whole process. We've done this with, it's now been almost 30 years. Yeah. Almost 40 years, 35 years. And we've not contradicted that. We I don't, don't like that. <laughs> People don't like that. You say, well, here, look here. No, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But there's a great, great YouTube video out from BBC on you know, German Institute. They took a reporter in, put him in the machine, looked at him, and lo and behold, you know, this guy could tell him six to eight seconds before he's going to do something that, in fact, you know, this is what he's going to do. Left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. And the BBC report just blown away. It's incontrovertible. It's been done over and over and over again. People don't like the answer. They fought against it. They argued against it. Libet even tried to find a way out of it, but it's held up. Indeed, they were determined to fight against Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? They couldn't they, but they fight couldn't against it. They couldn't but fight against it. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, but so this, this raises the, actually the possibility, though, there's also junk science, right? You know, when you, oh, when, yeah. Oh, totally. in, an, in another uh, video, we were talking about Suzanne Seagal, mm -hmm. and of course, now we have this book on depersonalization syndrome. Mm -hmm that is out, mm -hmm. you know, that they're ready, willing, and able to provide diagnoses of things, and it raises something interesting in mind that, you know, people could go out to their doctors and they say, you know, doctor, you know, could you please do a test on my eye? Can you please oh, yeah. locate Have my eye? eye? No, 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 not this one. <laughs> not this one either. Right. Please locate and describe the nature of my eye. Yeah. Now, until they can do that, how, what sense does it make to talk about depersonalization syndrome? Right. There has to be something there to be lost. Okay. So, you know, so you know, if we can uh, maintain our skepticism, particularly towards, it seems to me like those models that already mesh well with the kind of psychotherapeutic establishment right. that really want to diagnose us, right. uh, and you know, keep our skepticism as we look at the scientific models because that's how we learn about them. Right. That's incredibly useful. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, uh, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the pushbacks I get back on my science-oriented uh, meditation stuff is, well, you know, the problem with you science guys is it always keeps changing. You know, you came up with something five years ago, you thought that was the answer, now you've changed your, your story, now you've got a whole new story. Why should I bother to listen to you because it keeps changing? My response back has been, well, 400 years ago, the Catholic Church you know, disciplined Galileo because he kept claiming that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Uh, and it turned out he was, after 400 years, they admitted it. So if you want certainty, you go to the religions. They can give you certainty. Maybe incorrect, but it is certain. Think about science, the best of our abilities. This is the most correct information we have. We may get better skills in the future, 
new understandings, and things will change. But it's the best game going. Well, because it can be falsified. It can, absolutely, you can falsify it. You know, the and analogy we were working with before is, you know, if it's wrong and it gets into the Encyclopedia Britannica, oh, yeah. it's in there. Right. But if it's on Wikipedia, which is more the scientific model well, that it can be changed, changed, then it can get better. Yeah. Does it get better quickly enough and, and uniformly in all domains? No. 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 But can it change? Absolutely. Well, that was one of the earlier apps against Wikipedia. Jimmy. Yeah, I do. Oh, it's yeah. changing all the time. Yeah. And you can't believe this thing. Go to the Britannica. I can look up Britannica. I know what the answer is. Yeah. Well, that was the answer 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. may not be the answer today. No, it's not the answer today. Even about history. Yeah. We've learned so much about history. In fact, even the Wikipedia page on Encyclopedia Britannica has probably changed today. <laughs> 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 you know, to its benefit. Yeah. Right? You yeah. know, so, um, so I feel like, you know, we're such a polarized society about science yeah. and religion, and I feel like everybody needs to just sort of like take it a little bit lighter and say, hey, this could be interesting. Yeah. This could be useful. Right. Not like, we've proven once and for all that. Right. It's like, well, no. It, like, what we're looking for is guidance. So, yeah. you know, in terms of the use and abuse of science, it's the usefulness is to, is it a guide? Mm -hmm. The test is, how does it feel? What does it do for your own internal practice? Mm -hmm. Right? You can't turn over responsibility for your awakening okay. to the science. Okay. Um, and, and I think, you know, used, you know, in that kind of a practical sense as a part of what is inevitably a first-person mm -hmm. practice, it's been incredibly useful. And I was very skeptical of it. I had made my living being skeptical mm -hmm. of science, and I think rightly so, but, you know, there are limits both to the credulity that we want to give to science, yeah. but also to the skepticism. That it's been so useful working with people to say, look, you know, here's what we know. Here's the, you know, top, top tier journals good scientists, you know, great institutions, and here's this study, here's this study, here's this study, here's this, they all fit together, and they all form a logical thread. And that's compelling. Doesn't have to be bowing down to it, no. but at least here's a consistent stream of highly skilled people coming up with the same conclusion heading in the same direction. We've learned more at each step, gets more informed, we get more sophisticated, more detailed, but it's been a consistent path. And so I said, this is very useful. And people like that. I remember when I, my, my, brain, my brain first saw these pictures. It was, this is crazy, yeah. it was really fascinated by yeah. it. You know, it was me. And the brain was like, he really, you know, just the sense, this yeah. is kind of goofy, but it's the sense that, in fact, the brain was seeing for the first time that, in fact, this is what it had been trying to, doing, to yeah. do. But now it could actually see what it had been trying. Do. The brain wants to see what it's doing. Exactly. Yeah. And so it doesn't have any way to do that. But now it can kind of stand back from itself and look at this thing. And it's it's helpful. It's it illuminating. Is helpful. It you is know? Helpful. And, and what it's most limiting of is that there's nobody there doing the doing. Exactly. It's <laughs> obvious there isn't. And we look for it. Look for it. Well, the eyes all it's an ad hoc entity. It's all over the place. You know there's no little homunculus sitting there in the middle directing things. It's just a bunch of patterns across the surface but of the cortex. I can feel people going, but but, you know, I, I want to be the director yeah. of my own movie. You know, quiet on the set. Quiet you know? on the set. But what's interesting is, is that if you just, like, stay with it and, and realize what immense freedom that is in a different sense, that when you're free from there being that homunculus pulling the levers there, mm -hmm. and in fact you're in, in, instead this highly adaptive, you know, symbiotic, relational being that's interacting with a highly complex cosmos, it's beautiful. Right. Like, it's not a loss that there's no center to it. In fact, the, the idea that there's a center to it, you know, makes it kind of a drag. Right. It's like a Woody Allen movie. Yeah. Remember? They were pulling the levers up above. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's what that's <laughs> the vision we had of that. Yeah. But in fact, you find that, like you say, it's, yeah. a, it's a, even the whole thing of, of not having free will. Yeah. People are so afraid of that. We yeah. Before, about how... It's the most freeing, liberating, empowering thing, surprisingly, yeah. that you could imagine. Yeah. Because you're let go of this belief that you somehow can control things and must try to control things when it's impossible. You can't do it. You're right. not even there. Right. You're nothing but the cosmos surfing with itself. That's right. So Which is beautiful, though. Right. Because when you try to direct the, the surfing, you know, you keep falling off and you go, what's wrong with That's this, you know? Why did God create a being that can't surf? Yes. <laughs> it's just like, well, yelling at yourself internally. <laughs> disciplining yourself. Doing nothing but. Doing nothing but. <laughs> you idiot! That's Get right. back on the board! That's right. It's just, it's a, it's so a not problem. only can the eye not dance, 
It can't surf. It can't surf either. How about it just isn't? It isn't. It isn't even there. Scientifically. Mm -hmm.